You cannot overwork, you can only under recover. And to prove that to you, there's something called the Bulgarian method. Okay, the Bulgarian method was introduced uh, decades ago and we still use a version of it today. Uh, what happened was they were going to train three times a day. They were going to wake up in the morning. Let's say they're going to wake up at five. They were going to train by six. They were going to wake up, eat, train, eat, sleep. And then they would do that again at noon. They'd wake up, eat, train, eat, sleep. And then they would do that again at, let's say, five, six, seven o'clock at night. They would wake up, eat, train, sleep, be and then go back to bed. Now, the problem with this was not that their bodies broke down. Nobody's bodies broke down. Their bodies responded to it extremely well. Actually, uh, their minds were the thing that broke down. And what broke down about their minds was not the work involved. It was not. It was that they didn't have a social outlet. That's what started driving the guys crazy. And this was an experiment done on dudes. Now, so we needed to add in a certain amount of social interaction to be able to get this to work. This is still how elite athletes are training today, professional athletes that don't have to go to another job uh, and deal with the rigors and the stressors of that. Now, to deal with stress, because there are, two, there, there are two different kinds of stresses. There's stress by design, and then there's just the crappy kind of stress that we get from life, right? A fight with your significant other, stubbing your toe, uh, <laughs> really bad traffic. It just kind of sucks. Whereas stress by design is stress that we are, well, we're, we're working smart to create a stimulus that the body will respond to in order to give us what we want. It's a coaxing along of the body and of the mind. Okay, we have stress by design, uh, where we can do uh, school would be stressed by design, workouts would be stressed by design, whereas a fight with your significant other, uh, really uh, sitting in traffic for hours on end, um, uh, thinking really negative, awful thoughts, beating yourself up. Uh, people do this one extremely well. They have a really hard time with this one over here. But now, this is the reality. The body doesn't differentiate between these two and neither do your mind. Okay? The body doesn't differentiate between these two. Stress is stress, okay? It doesn't differentiate between either of them any more than it would differentiate between how it's gonna heal a knife wound and how it's gonna heal a gunshot wound. It's gonna heal them, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna create inflammation to bring blood flow to the area and then that blood is gonna form a, form a scab and so on and so forth. It's gonna drive the same healing process that it would for both. How, so, the, your body doesn't differentiate between these, so you have to take both into consideration. Okay? You don't get to have a full day, 12 hours at work, go to a ridiculously hard workout twice a day, and get five hours of sleep and think you're, you're going to progress from it. It's not going to happen. Okay? You have to put uh, uh, energy towards this recovery thing. Okay? You cannot overwork. You can only under-recover. Okay? You cannot put two hours, uh, you can't put 12 hours of work uh, at, at work in your professional development and then put an hour uh, an hour's work on at the beginning and the end of the day only get six hours of work at night and neglect your significant other to the point that uh, he or she starts bitching about how you're never home because that's just more stress okay but if all of that is happening and we're still getting 10 hours of sleep at night maybe you have a chance do you see what i'm saying those bulgarian method guy, uh, guys that they did that experiment with they were sleeping like 16 hours a day Okay. They might have been doing three really hard workouts, but they were training or they were sleeping 16 hours per day. That is twice as much as most people get. Actually, most people don't get eight hours, but that's twice as much as the recommended amount. They had massive recovery. Okay. They didn't have massive workouts compared to their recovery. They had massive recovery compared to their workouts. Okay. That's something to think about. You cannot overwork. You cannot overwork. You can only under recover. So in the last few videos where I'm like, man, you got to put all your energy into today. You got to put all your effort, all your focus, all your, all your uh, courage into today. It might sound a little bit like, man, he's telling us to overwork and overtrain. And there's no way that I could possibly sustain that. Uh, other way around. There's no way that you could possibly sustain not doing that because you're going to die someday. And you're going to be on your deathbed and you're going to look back and you're going to be like, man, I really regret conserving. I'm going to really regret not going on that trip. I'm going to really regret not going for that scary thing. I really regret not kissing the girl, uh, fighting for the championship, going for my dreams. That's what's going to happen on your deathbed, not the other way around. Okay? But if you put everything you have out into your day and you recover from it a great deal, you can put more out into it tomorrow. So you cannot overwork. You can only under recover, get this recovery thing down. Okay. And use that both ways. I'm going to put as much energy, focus, effort, courage, 
uh, towards my day as I possibly can. I'm going to use it all, and then I'm going to go get more because I'm going to put that I'm going to put that same energy, effort, focus, and uh, encourage towards my sleep, okay? towards my recovery. All right. So use that. You cannot overwork. You can only under recover.